Hey, we are Sidebar and welcome to Field Trip. All right, so we're here with Adam and Dan from Ombigaze. They just played an amazing set at this stage right here, and we're gonna ask a question or two. Yeah. So Dan, I'll start with you. I heard that when you were 16, you put out a record on MySpace. Yeah. And you were contacted by a record company. What was it like putting out like a shoegazy record like so early and having such great reception to it? I was just really surprised. I was. Uh... You know, my mom thought that, that these uh, older men were, like, going to try kidnap me. Yeah. <laughs> As any mother would, I feel yeah. like, you know? So she wouldn't let me meet them in, unless she was there. So I put together, like, a community show, and they came. And um, I was just really surprised that people would like that music back then, I guess. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And Adam, my question for you is, I heard when you were touring, your, you hit a pothole on, on your way from Montreal to Toronto. And your car broke down, and you had to get it towed. But it ended up being cheaper getting towed from Toronto, from Montreal to Toronto than it would have been driving. Has any other tour mishaps driving around like that happened over your t career? <laughs> that's hilarious. That's that's a really good one, and and there are like many stories of breaking down. <clears throat> we used to drive an old bus and old diesel vehicles, and you know you have to plug your vehicle in at night. You can't get it started. The bus we literally had to open the hood every day to get that started, <laughs> but. Uh, I don't know how you know that, but yeah. that is that was the ultimate. I'm sure that it was some sort of shady thing, but uh, it worked out for us. Literally, yeah. he dropped the van in front of our bandmate's house in Toronto, and uh, straight from Montreal, it cost us 90 bucks. The gas would have been more than that. Especially nowadays, I feel like oh my that's gosh. like $300 worth of gas today. Totally, I, I talk about it all the time as if like, hey, maybe we should just uh, try and get a tow yeah. today. Yeah. CAA, everywhere you go. <laughs> venue to venue. Yeah, okay, well, thanks for joining, and maybe we'll chat with you guys another time yeah, in the studio. Yeah, great, thank you. Have a, have have a great day. day. Awesome, yeah, that's thank a, you. That's a pleasure. Right. So we're here with Kara from Valley. My question for you is, I heard you used to make a drum kit out of shoe boxes. Yes, when you were younger. I did. <laughs> and it was part of your like grade eight curriculum. You started on some sort of uh, Ghanaian drum kit. When was the shift from that to be like, I want to be a, a, a drummer. I want to build a new drum kit. And now it's your career. I mean, ideally the shoe box drum kit would have served me, but it didn't. I played it for like a couple hours and it was completely like deteriorated. Destroyed. But my mom heard me playing and like making this little thing downstairs for hours and she signed me up for a drum lesson just like in our hometown and she told me and I was like mom like oh I this is so embarrassing I don't want to go to drum lessons like I only do this kind of drumming which is like this West <laughs> yeah. African Ghanaian drumming that we had to learn like in elementary school it yeah. was just a part of the curriculum and I kind of like liked doing that my uncle was also a drummer so I sort of had a bit of an influence with that and she was like, just go, like, see how you like it. You don't have to, like, continue with it. So anyway, I went and, like, obviously I, like, with my tail between my legs, I, like, went, I'm like, I actually liked it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll do it it's again. And then, your parents that, yeah, I, like, fine. Right. I liked it so much. And so anyways, I did drum lessons for, like, pretty much my whole life up until the end of high school. And then I went to school for drums um, at Humber College. I had to leave, dropped out, didn't finish, but now here I am yeah, in I the band like and you're in a good you know, spot. Just keep playing drums Great. and I'll always play drums as long as yeah. I don't get crippling arthritis, which it is could happen in the business. It could well, happen. well we're, we're, we're hoping against it. It could happen. Yeah. Uh, you got time for one more? Yeah, for sure. So I saw this morning you posted an Instagram or TikTok uh, with the Bo Burnham sound uh, with the everyone's a feminist until yeah. you have to load the gear. And the yeah. comment was, <laughs> Something about a medical reason, that a like, legal medical reason why it, it couldn't be. Okay, so I think, okay, so Becca, our photographer, posted that. And I didn't, I had nothing to do with caption, but I think <laughs> she was making fun of me. Because as per my arthritis joke, yeah. I have to get plastic surgery on oh, no. my wrist. I don't know why it has to be plastic surgery, but I just went to the doctor the other day and she yeah. was like, 
you're gonna have to get that removed like it's like a bump and like it's right. actually like yeah. really prohibiting for me to play drums and she's like Weird. it also might be arthritis right so now i'm like in this like like just spiral of like am i gonna get like early onset arthritis because i play drums like i don't even know i have to get this bump removed and then we'll see how it goes but now my band and becca are all making fun of me for it because they're like it's she the has a joke. she has a medical problem she can't load in but right I actually can. I just, you know, I'm using it as a cop out. Yeah, yeah. So it's my scapegoat it to is, just like, you know, it's a usable get away scapegoat. without yeah. doing any work. But yeah. I'm just kidding, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. All right. That's, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're really looking forward to your set and uh, hopefully we'll catch the other lads on their ways around. So Amazing. Great Thank you so you. much, yeah. Daniel. Appreciate it. All right. Sidebar here with Valley's Rob. What's up? Uh, well, I guess start off. Who are you most excited to see today? Yeah. Um, I really love Peach Pit. They're playing like right after us. So I'm going to pack up and run and see Peach Pit. They're yeah. awesome. And then uh, obviously Nathaniel tonight, um, Lucy Dacus. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, so good. Uh, but I think that's the pri the steel of the, sh the whole festival, I think is the, is the dog show. It's the dog um, show. I what are they called? Ult Ultimates. 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 Yeah. So uh, Hollywood, I think they, they stole show. I want to go see them again. I already saw them once. I'm like, I'll, I'll go to every show today. <laughs> We're going to try to interview some of those dogs yeah. later. I was on joking our... around with the band. I was like, on our next tour, we should get <laughs> the <opener>. them to <laughs> open. Like, how sick would that be if on stage, just like a dog did tricks for like 30 minutes and then we went on? Uh, Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Switch I, it up, you know? I love it. I would, yeah. I would go see that. And get to tour with dogs. It's yeah. sick. It's yeah. a perfect scenario. Although maybe uh, a little stinkier loud. A little stinkier loud. Yeah, they're probably separate bus but for, the, for the mutts. Yeah, yeah, but, separate uh, bus. <laughs> That'd be interesting tour buddies oh, for yeah. sure. Uh, so I heard a story that your shoes kept on getting stolen on your tours. Oh my gosh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So this is a thing, kind of me and Mike, and well, it's, it stems from Mike actually, and then we all, it just keeps happening, but Mike for some reason will leave like his shit everywhere and most importantly shoes he'll just like we'll be in like philly and then we get to new york and he's like shit my shoes are gone <laughs> so i don't know and it's to the point where we've air tagged like he's air tagged a lot of things because like his passport <laughs> he's lost his passport twice so oh, he has no. like an air tag duct tape to his current passport because if he loses it he's fucked like sorry, right i don't know if i can swear no fucked. you totally can he's like screwed so uh, that stemmed from him, and I think I've picked up some some bad qualities from him because I've tried to be. I'm very like OCD and very like, oh, I need to have everything packed and everything. But yeah. I've lost a few few things <laughs> thanks to him. He's he's made me chill out more. He's like, man, don't worry about it. But um, right. he. Uh, yeah, he, he started the whole thing. It's it's really Mike that loses the shoes the most. <laughs> and I heard there was kind of a system, like a almost like an XP point road oh, system. Oh yeah. Around, can you tell us a little about that? Oh yeah. It's wait. Are you talking about when we got our stuff stolen? Yeah. Oh, in in Portland. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was crazy. We basically we parked our van. I was after, we were touring with Len and Stella, and we were like, we want we had this thing on tour where we want to go to tiki bars a lot. <laughs> Okay, I love it. We did after shows. We I love like it. Find the coolest tiki bar because tiki bars are so fun. So, like, what was you, the coolest tiki bar that you went to? It was some random. Well, we didn't end up going to it. This is the <laughs> thing. We park in front of the tiki bar and then, freaking, just we're like, okay, this seems like a cool area. Like it wasn't too sketchy, and we it was like the it was like Portland's version of Young Street right. in Toronto. Sure. So it was like pretty pretty bumping, and we're like, yeah. okay, it's fine here. And then we walked to the tiki bar, and then the tiki bar was like at max capacity, and then Lennon's crew left. So we're like, okay, let's just go to a diner. So we went to this diner, and then we walked back, and we see the windows broken. All our stuff is stolen. Like oh. uh, laptops, passports, like Alex, I think all of his stuff got stolen. Some of us got a few things stolen. It was just like a mess. Uh, our tour manager's like laptop, everything to run the show was on it. So, right. But find my iPhone. He didn't turn it off. Let's go. We found, so we chased him around Portland and to his like apartment, but then we couldn't break into his apartment because I guess the cops were like, you need to have a warrant to just like break bust down the door yeah, and be yeah. like, you stole it. But then we're like, it's literally in the building. Like it's <laughs> we there. The I track. see it. It's his bike. Cause then we got the security footage and we saw it was his bike and it was on the balcony. So we're like, dude, all our stuff is there and we couldn't do anything. So right. it was actually a really sad day. And then we were like, well, we're fucked then. And then we ended uh, up just like insurance covered most of the right. items we needed. But right. it was just one of those situations where like you, you see the answer, you feel the answer, but you can't do anything about it. That's brutal. So, Did you have any like content yeah. on those laptops? Like, cause uh, I know like, if I lost a we laptop, had a lot of new songs and stuff, yeah. but to be honest, a part of me is like, Oh, is he like bumping new Valley or he probably just wiped it and sold it. Or yeah, something. yeah. But I like to think every time we go up to Portland now, we put 
him on guest list. We always like mess, like we make a post sometimes and be like, Hey, the guy who stole our stuff, if you for, cause he probably knows who Valley is like, looking through all our right, shit. Right. It's like, Oh Valley, they were a band. So yeah. we're always like joking, posting like Valley's important this day. If you're here, <laughs> you know come to the who show. you are. We want to meet you. We're not mad anymore. Yeah. We have everything mad. We just want to meet you and, and like talk to you and be like, we're what not ha- mad. What happened, dude? We're just um, disappointed. Seemed like a pretty normal dude. Like, on the security cam footage. I think he was just having a rough, rough, rough right. patch. Right. Rough patch. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, dude, what can we do for you? So yeah, anyways, yeah. long story short, well, big chase through Portland with our little find my iPhone system. Yeah. I, I <laughs> like was Steve I, jobs. I, I <laughs> thought you were going to get it. But it was kind of a ro- oh, emotional <laughs> roller coaster oh, of a yeah. story there. <laughs> oh, what a summer, an emotional roller coaster. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Uh, yeah, last question is yes. just, what is the last song or album you've been bumping on your phone? Oh, uh, jeez. Yeah, let's, oh, let's, we're getting the proof, too. You Spotify I mean, not, or Apple nothing, Music kind of guy? I'm both. I, okay, my last song I bumped was a song called Phoenix by Rye. Rye. Canadian, Rye. eh? Yeah, Canadian, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> eh? I, I didn't even mean to do <laughs> Canadian, that. Canadian, eh? <laughs> no, I would do it. Uh, and then I've been bumping the new 975 part yeah. of the band, and then I've been bumping um, this band called Jungle. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there's just such a vibe. I yeah. played them last night because our manager flew in from LA and I was like, we were just having drinks yeah. and stuff at our place. And I put on Jungle. I was like, man, this is the best music to just have on at any point of the day. Oh, there's man. I totally agree. Vibe. So, Jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Too. And they yeah. just put out a new single, new two yeah. singles. So, they're, they're crushing it. They're so yeah. good. Um, what about you? Oh, last one on mine. Oh, yeah. I've been listening to a lot of the yeah, artists. Apple Music or Spotify or both? I'm Apple Music. Okay, cool. I like uh, Apple Music for organizing music. It, exactly. Spotify's great for Better for like that, both. worse for. Yeah, it was Kurt Vile because I've been listening to. Because okay, you're getting hyped for so today. I'm getting hyped okay. for the show. Cool. But in my like recently added, uh, you know, Pax. Yeah. Like on yeah, on yeah. Roman Records, she just released a new EP. So that cool. was pretty solid. Nice. Obviously, the new Always just uh, came out. New Always, they're back. New Whitney. Oh, Whitney. New oh, Chance. Yeah. I mean, Chance. it's oh, it's yeah. been a lot of good music. And that's good, man. The last full album, I guess, was Pusha T. I've been bumping oh, a lot of the new Pusha go. T. album. Pusha T. Like Brambleton. Like let's go. Oh, that's that's fire. Um, that's sick, man. Yeah. Well. I hope we need to get Kurt in here. Yeah, well, if I see him around at catering. I'm yeah, he Kurt, he did not he really, respond okay. to our messages. I'll see if I can. We did a lot of research on I can Kurt. Actually, converts Kurt. Can yeah. convert, convince <laughs> Kurt. Convert Jeez. Kurt to convert Judaism. Convert Kurt to Judaism. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the plan. That's the goal. Um, of the I'll, I'll put a little warm in his ear if I see him. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that'd be Thanks great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. no this problem. Is awesome. See you later. Hey. We're here with Georgia Harmer. She's played a lovely set at Field Trip. And we're gonna ask a few questions. So my first question is about I eat kids. No way. So I heard. I'm on Nardwar. <laughs> that's that's the goal I'm here. Uh, yeah. So I eat kids. I found this like crazy video of you and a bunch of kids playing in front of a shop. Can you tell me a little about that? Yeah. Actually, it's funny because Sadie, my bandmate for my kids, is here today, and her dad's in Rio Static. No way. Yeah. And I was just calling out about that. Um, but we had a band. It was me and my two best friends in elementary school, and all of our younger siblings. Yeah because we needed to include them. Yeah, of course, as you do. And they were pretty good at tambourine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Well, I, I actually, you were interviewed as I Eat Kids, and I found a quote that you said, <laughs> which I thought it would bring back now okay. and that you were a festival. You, you were quoted saying, this is how big you wanted to get. We want to have a MySpace and a yeah. website and record songs and gig and more. Yeah. We want to be famous, but not super famous. Honestly, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed? Do you have a MySpace and a website? I don't have a MySpace, uh, but the equivalent. It, I think it'll come back. Yeah. So when it does, I'll have The MySpace yeah. revival, yeah. you'll be right on it. All right, great. Well, that's it for now. Uh, thanks so that. much for chatting. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. Hey, sidebar is at Field Trip. This is the coolest thing. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Busty and the Bass, bassist Milo right here beside me. So Milo, I heard Busty and the Bass, the name Busty and the Bass, was, came from when you met you were at a house party in Montreal, and you found it written on a napkin the next day. Did you ever find out who wrote that on the napkin? No, and actually, I wasn't there. You weren't so there? So, little, yeah, little known fact, I wasn't even the original bassist. Ah. I came in, like, a year in, right. and then, uh, obviously, that's when the band really started right. taking off. Right, so. Well, so then you yeah. were the kick that, that they needed? I mean, not necessarily. You were the bass to I the was the, I was the I was the last arriving member before we, like, formed right. our, our right. first unit. Gotcha. So. And is that, like, still a band mystery of where that napkin came from? Yeah, nobody knows. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What a weird uh, scenario. I saw a video cut together, and it had a bunch of 
what looked like the band members' home videos kind of cut together. Can you tell us about like going back and looking at all these videos of, I guess, you guys as kids playing music super young? Yeah, I mean, what was, what was interesting for me is um, like two of the band members, so our guitarist and our, our drummer, um, Louis and Julian, like both of their parents took like a lot of home videos of them playing music. Like both uh, Louis, Louis' dad and Julian's, both of Julian's parents are both like phenomenal musicians. So they had, neither of my parents like are really super that musical. So I was like, yeah, it's just funny to see a three-year-old Julian playing a drum set and being like, that's, you know, that's definitely <laughs> this where This is it what he from. is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very um, cool. Yeah, so, no, that was that was kind of a trip to see. That was a project that we did, um, like, a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, and just uh, tried to combine, right, combine right. people's home videos. Right. All right, well, it was great chatting with you. You as well. And uh, see you later. We had a lovely day at Field Trip today. We just wanted to give a shout out to the Field Trip team for putting on such a nice event and to Steve's Music. They hooked us up with all of our sound gear for the day and I think we were sounding pretty crispy. So thanks to Steve's. Have a nice night everyone.